OPAF stands for the Orthotic and Prosthetic Activities Foundation. We serve as a national organization within orthotics and prosthetics as the official philanthropic arm of the community. And what we do is provide introductory level adaptive recreation opportunities and possibilities to anybody with a physical challenge. We call them the first clinics because in a lot of instances, it's either the first time that they are ever trying a sport or activity, or it's the first time post-accident, post-injury, post-illness. So what we're trying to do is to get them up, get them active, and get them integrated back in a social aspect. Today is First Dance. First Dance introduces this, this population to the possibility of social dance ballroom dancing style as well as a line dance or any of those kinds of things gets them up especially with this population they worry about balance so with dance you've given them a partner to hold on to to help you're also giving them somebody who's literally a foot away that they've got to socially integrate with and it gives them a smile and gives them a good time and shows them what the possibilities are that they can do and to me, dancing is about sometimes non-movement. It's really more about uh, relating uh, to other people. Uh, it's about the relationship, it's about the music, it's about partnership. And so it's uh, hopefully a great place for people now to kind of come today, uh, get a chance to interact with people, uh, not on Facebook in, in the way that we normally do around today, but also, um, also to uh, learn a little bit about dancing and a little bit about their strengths as well. I'm here to dance today. Um, I run an amputee support group. It's called the Southeast um, Oakland County Support Group at the Royal Oak Hospital. And um, I'm able to bring in a lot of the people that dance. A lot of my members come and love to come out and dance. I'm able to publicize it for them at my meetings and get a lot of people to join in on this activity. So um, I'm here to um, dance just like them. I'm an amputee. So um, I enjoy it as well, you know, all these um, activities going on for the amputees. And I have been fortunate to, to take one ballroom dancing lesson, but I did it on foot. I'm blessed to be able to walk with my cane and with the help of a brace. And uh, it, I enjoyed it, but afterwards I noticed a little bit of pain in my right hip, which is the paralyzed side of my body. So I decided, well, what the heck, I'll come out and see, you know, what they can offer, you know, people in chairs, you know. Um, I'd like to see what kind of uh, um, options there are for ballroom dancing in my wheelchair. Got it. That's it. That is it. How's that feel? The sport is important. It's the social aspect that I find is where the stories come from. The people who discover what their possibilities are out there, they never knew. They think that post-surgery, post-accident, post-injury, that they're changed, that their lives are over, and they need to find out that there are fun things out there and that there are good times to be had. To me, it's more about the opportunity to get out and um, to be able to move and be comfortable and enjoy the music and other people and just have an opportunity to try something new. Um, yes, it's great that you can work on balance. You can work on just moving. If you're in a situation where you don't have good balance, you can use a partner. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just turn you slightly to the side. Perfect, and we're the, the leader's still gonna do side together, and we're gonna go side, and you're gonna shift your rib cage side to side. So you start with your ribs over your left side. Here we go, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Back. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've been very blessed to do this once before, um, and it was one of the most gratifying experiences that I've ever had in dance. Um, I think uh, the experience of, of taking somebody who thinks they can't dance or is unable to do it now and to show them that it's totally wrong and that they can still do it, they can still enjoy it, and they can do it sometimes better than um, some of my, my um, students that are here on a daily basis because um, I think overcoming some of the things that people uh, that are gonna be here today have had to do um, have made them stronger 
Uh, and I think sometimes I look at my other students after the experience I had last year and look at like if they had that drive or that strength or that inner strength to keep working and persevering, they could go wherever they wanted to. And that's kind of what I want to do today is, is set people on that path today um, to, uh, to really get them to, like I said, to keep finding their strength and to find that point that this can be something fun, it can be a social outlet for them. And, um, and I think that's, that's really what we want to do. It's unfortunate to say that the events for people with disability because I don't view one of these people as being disabled. I don't. They, they just have had something happen in their life that they've had to find an alternate path. Um, and you know, we've certainly opened things up. We're, we have some amputees here. We have people that have had a stroke. We have people that had a traumatic brain injury. Um, so, you know, SOAR is really focused on providing opportunities for any of those people that have a physical limitation that they've had to overcome. I think people need to realize that um, they can just keep going. It's going to be different, um, but there's lots of opportunities. And getting back to things that you might have loved or trying something new is, I think, important to anyone, anyone with a disability. Well, one is, is being around people who have had similar experiences. Um, two, it's, it's helping with community reentry, being around people and reestablishing your identity. I mean, so much of my identity before my accident 32 years ago was sports, and of course I was, I was working as a manager by a small clothing chain. You know, you know, very physical, and um, I was just devastated when my spinal cord injury happened. Um, I didn't know if I'd ever participate in, in those sports again, and that was very much a part of my identity, um, very much a part of, um, you know, what gave me that sense of um, accomplishment and um, competence, and it was a real confidence builder for me to get back into sports. In fact, I, um, I came out and tried uh, downhill skiing as a, as a result of Wendy Beattie's coaching many years ago and had a lot of fun on the hills. Um, I four-tracked as well as uh, uh, sit, did sit skiing. Uh, just come out and try them. You know, it's, you don't necessarily have to continue to do it all. Like, I don't downhill ski anymore. I don't water ski anymore. But I've tried so many other things that I enjoy more, like kayaking. I still dabble with my tennis, but as we age, unfortunately, you know, parts get sore, and my right arm's been a problem for a couple of years now. So I don't go out of my way to have, you know, to slam it like I used to. But, you know, there's a lot of fun things, and, you know, it, it, um, it continues to help you grow and develop, you know, into the person that you want to be. And, and sports is also really awesome for preparation for employment. You know, if you learn to work in, in a team situation, um, you know, that's what you got to do in business. It's a great training ground. Look at how nicely she changes her weight. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So a lot of merengue is rib cage as well. So that's why the shoulders don't do all this. Because the major reason that they should get involved is is one of the things that we do very differently in our studio than most studios. Is most studios they focus they focus on. Uh, the competition aspect of it, that we're going to go to compete and you're going to beat so-and-so and you're going to, you know, you see what they're doing and what I think what we're going to do is we're going to say, you focus on yourself, what are your strengths, then you focus on what your limitations are and then you keep working. I've known dance champions that have had fused vertebrae, who've had um, knees that um, haven't been able to have mobilization because they've been in horseback riding accidents and they've become champions you know, despite physical li li uh, you know, disabilities that they've had. And I think that's what um, I want to show the, the, the people today. That's what I want to show them. I want to show them that nothing can limit you. Um, and then and dancing is about the experience. Some of the best experiences I've had in dance that have nothing to do with how technically good I've been, it comes from the interaction. 
you know, dancing with my mother at a wedding and um, my father was uh, very sick and he was about to pass away and my mother telling me how much she loved him. I don't think things like that happen if, if you're not physically touching somebody and dancing. I think you get real when you dance with, with somebody. And I think, you know, there's a shortage of that sometimes in the dance community. You know, it's all about fake, fake eyelashes and the dresses and all that and stuff. But really, today I hope we're going to show what dancing really is about. Seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, backward, forward. Got it, that's it, that is it. How's that feel? Nice. They don't need me. Five, six, seven, eight. You know, um, I hear a lot about them. I get a lot of feedback because I am um, in a support group role. And um, it's awesome. It's awesome to see my um, people come from the beginning of getting an amputation and then they come to these activities. And it just makes you really feel that you really can achieve a lot. You know, even if it's an amputee, I think it's a wonderful that they have these. Most of the time they're free, you know, so there's no cost to the amputee. Um, they just got to travel to where the event is, and we try to group everybody together to make it, you know, more, even more financially able to do it. And it's just great for them. They love it. The golfing that goes on, you know, I have a lot of golfers in my group, and um, I have a lot, of, I, you know, we've built friendships. So we love going to these. I went to the one two weeks ago, the scuba, the first uh, scuba diving and paddle event. That was a real success, you know, some more of my members joined in on that. I didn't participate, I just watched. But I get joy out of just watching them that uh, bring up, you know, that they're doing this. Because if it's not available to them, they'd be sitting at home, most likely, you know, and um, it just brings joy to their life.